Okay, continuing on with the um, control selection, the, the selection, the choice of your control safeguards countermeasures in terms of risk management. And we have talked about uh, the total cost of the safeguard management, uh, the accountability, the absence of design secrecy, and uh, the audit capabilities. And those issues, those factors. Um, I suppose, uh, again, um, cost-benefit analysis comes into it. We've, we've mentioned this before. We'll mention it again. This, it comes up over and over and over again. And this goes right back to... Uh, the beginning, the first principles that I was talking about, that security supports the business and not the other way around. So we always have to have, uh, and, and we have a, a bit of a problem with this uh, issue of return on investment and, and saying that uh, security is an investment in the business and people have you know problems because security never gives you a, a revenue stream uh, unless you're in a security business um, you need though to to measure you know what what is the cost of this safeguard what is the benefit that it is going to give us uh, in terms of the safety in terms of reducing risk managing risk uh, mitigating the risk and ensuring uh, that we get the best, um, well, return on our investment in, in terms of the reduction of risk that is affected by this particular safeguard. So, uh, going on then, uh, look at your vendor. Vendor trustworthiness. Can we trust the vendor? Now, you know, that's, that's always a uh, difficulty, but um, the... In, in this case, it's not just, you know, are these good guys? Are, are these, you know, uh, people who we trust not to put a, uh, you know, back door into their product that uh, uh, we, uh, you know, know that they are on our side, that they're not uh, going to be doing something untoward to our uh, systems, to our business, what have you. Um, but in addition, are these people going to last? Uh, is is this um, a a decent business with a dis decent business model? Um, these people are, uh, you know, are they going to be in business? If if we are going to rely on them for our security, for our safety, uh, for uh, the continuation of our business, are they going to be in business? long enough to be of benefit to us or you know if we install this system from theirs and and this goes back to the the uh, design secrecy aspect you know are, are we going to be stuck with something that we don't know exactly what it's doing and therefore we have no idea what we need to replace it with if they go out of business uh, so <coughs> a number of aspects of the the trustworthiness of the vendor uh you know we we are relying on them we are depending on them uh you know we've got our supply chain issues and uh outsourcing and and all those other issues and topics that are uh you know big in business uh, and i suppose uh, you know, this may seem like a bit of a digression, but um, we are always very big on efficiency in business, and and business is always very big on efficiency and and uh, you know trimming the margins, making it lean and mean, and and ensuring that we uh, uh, you know are are reducing costs and that sort of thing. Um, but you know, be careful. Um, when, uh, you know, as I've said before, when we go after efficiency at the expense of everything else, uh, we may get to a point where we, 
you know, efficiency costs us in terms of resilience. And if we do not uh, take that into account, we may find ourselves in a situation where, yeah, we're very efficient and we're really stuck because something goes wrong and then the whole thing collapses. So, you know, another aspect of the vendor trustworthiness there. And in a sense, this, this uh, brings us to our next point, and that's the independence of control and subject. And, of course, this uh, comes back to the issue of separation of duties, a very important principle, and we're going to be looking at it again uh, when we get into access control, um, and the fact that the system that is doing uh, the checking uh, should not be the system that is actually doing the production. And, you know, in the same way, the person who is doing the checking shouldn't be the person who is doing the production. And this is where we get into our separation of audit and uh, uh, the actual, you know, security team. And uh, the, the need to, to do that. It's a, it's a very important principle. It is a principle which um, we will see over and over again and we rely on a great deal and and we neglect that principle at our peril so um independence of control and subject separation of duties yeah now universal application uh this is this is an interesting one next time we're going to be talking about isolation you may think okay there's there's a contradiction here but um in terms of the universality of application we are looking at you know, can we apply this overall? Uh, if we are dealing with firewalls, uh, does this firewall do everything that we need it to do at, in every location we have a firewall within the company? Or do we have to have different types of firewalls in different places, you know, and, and possibly from different vendors? And then, you know, we get into a situation where our issues of training our issues of maintenance, our issues of um, subscriptions, support, all, all those other types of issues um, become a, a problem. So we want to have, uh, for a, a specific tool, um, a, uh, a universality of application, the ability to put it in place everywhere that we need this particular type of tool. Um, we want to have that type of, of universality. When, when we're talking about isolation, we're talking more about the, uh, the separation of duties type uh, topic where um, we, uh, we don't want to have a, uh, a mechanism um, that is going to be too closely tied to some of our other systems that may be in danger so that our security systems break down at the same time as, as our other systems. That's, that's what we're dealing with there in the, uh, in the isolation. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, but uh, compartmentalization um, uh, and, and defense in depth, uh, and again, we'll talk about this uh, particularly in physical control. That's where we can actually sort of see it in... in uh, reality in, in the real world, but uh, defense in depth, um, the the layered defense, um, the layers of protection that we put around things, and and really we uh, you know we need to be looking at that, and, and frequently we are looking at that uh, uh, a great deal. But um, in terms of compartmentalization, we're thinking: is there a special need for security? for this particular asset is does this need an extra layer does this need an extra compartment uh to make sure that it is it is protected so again all of these things to do with how we select our uh, uh our design and our our security overall